Welcome to my Interior Design Kids Club with me, Gwendolyn, professional interior designer. Today we're out in the garden because we're going to be doing some sewing and you can do sewing anywhere. Um, you don't need a garden but uh, if you haven't got a garden then you can share mine today. Um, so what you're going to need is I find this a bit thick for what I need it but I'm going to make this into a quilt for my doll's house box bedroom for the bed. This I found is some foam uh, and that's going to be the mattress, quite squidgy, <laughs> whereas this is nice and soft. And this is my bed if you remember, so this is a box and I've just painted it. Um, I'm probably going to get some hob socks and stuff them <laughs> in there and then that will make it a bit more solid because at the moment it's a bit squidgy <laughs> so I'll get some odd find some odd socks and make that a bit firmer so that will be my base for my bed this will be my mattress oh it's like a princess bed isn't it and then this is going to be my duvet my quilt um, probably go that way and look how stiff it is so we need to do something about that don't we so as well as these types of things so if you haven't got any foam stuff for your mattress don't worry because you could just use your box and then find something to make your quilt out of and then that will look just as lovely when it's finished um, for your quilt I mean, I found this in the loft. I probably used it to make um, maybe a notice board or something like that out of it in the past. Um, and you could use maybe an old t-shirt, maybe a pillowcase, an old pillowcase. You could use that to make your quilt from, to stuff it with. Um, maybe some cotton wool buds, cotton wool pads. They'd be ideal actually, wouldn't they? Use some cotton wool uh, pads. So that's what you need to find. You need to have your box that's going to be your bed. If you remember we looked at that when we looked at um, it was a lesson four with furniture planning. We decided what our bed was going to be. So get your bed. <clears throat> if you can find a little mattress, a little foam or you could use another box if you wanted. Just use two boxes on top of each other and then you can find um, something to make a quilt out of. So my quilt cover, I'm going to make it um, out of this pillowcase. Um, you might need some safety pins. They would be useful if you've got them. And then today we're going to do some sewing. So this is my sewing tin. <laughs> I've had this for years. I can't even remember what came in there originally. I think it must have been chocolates or biscuits. But it's quite nice, isn't it? Because it's lovely and sunny. And then inside, I've got all of my sewing bits. I've got my sewing scissors. So these are special scissors because you've noticed that they're flat on the bottom. And that means when you cut on a table, get a nice straight line. So I've got my zigzag scissors. <clears throat> These give a, a zigzag edge so if I don't want to sew the edge that stops the material from fraying so that can be quite useful but you don't need them for today. You could just have a normal pair of scissors for today. I'm just showing you what I've got in here. So I've got my little snippy scissors. <laughs> you need to be really careful with those because they are very very sharp on the end as all scissors are. I've got my needles, so some sewing needles and then some thread. So whatever colour you want. Um, it's very windy out here. <laughs> I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my yellow thread. I think that will look nice with that today. So I've got different colours of yellow as I would do because I like sewing. <laughs> Let me just put this up straight. So I can choose whatever colour yellow I want. 
mood today? What do you think? Light, medium or dark? I quite like the medium one because this is a really old bobbin. It used to belong to Great Nana. Where's it from? Paisley, Clark & Co. It's a very, very old thread. So choose your thread, get a needle and some scissors. Let me put that to one side. So the first thing I'm going to do is with my mattress. <laughs> Feels weird calling this a mattress. <laughs> so I'm going to get my pillowcase and I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to cut it in half with my scissors so I know where half mark is. <clears throat> and I'm using the top, sorry actually now it looks like a sleeve, oh look at that, that's to my dress. <laughs> <clears throat> and then I'm going to cut down the C so it's a nice straight piece of material there we go oh look now like a little bikini <laughs> and um, I think I only need this section I don't need all of that piece so let's cut that off. It's best to take off the material you're not going to use because then it doesn't get in the way. So I'm getting rid of this bit with the flap because that flap might be useful later on. So we'll keep that. And then we're just using this piece here. So what I'm going to do is get my mattress and put it in the middle and then fold it but to begin with, I'm going to take this double piece of material off because when I fold it, I want it to be nice and neat and that double bit of material will make it maybe bobble up a little bit. So we don't want that. <clears throat> so we're going to use a Japanese folding method. I did this at Christmas, presents. Um, so you don't need to do any sewing with this. Whoa, thumbs up for that. So just get your material and get your um, mattress. I'm going to fold this over. Oh, fold that over and then I, you see this, I've got all this extra material here. So I'm just going to make sure it goes to the edge and then I'll chop the extra bit off. Let me make it nice and straight so it's easier for you to see. So I fold it over. Yeah, I fold it over like a little sandwich and I'm going to take off this bit here. Dee, dee, dee. It's nice being in the garden, isn't it? Can you hear the birds? They're tweeting. Very nice. Very nice to hear the birds, but make sure you've got sunscreen on. As always, protect yourself. So this piece of material goes all the way around my mattress. And then I'm just going to fold these edges over neatly, like that and then the other one into the corner into the other corner fold it up and then I just need a safety pin and then there's my mattress oh, oh, oh. look at that right I'm just going to do that neatly I'll do it a bit neater um, you know how we like things nice and neat so I'm just trying to get the corners nice and crisp and neat. I get out my safety pin 
already and then I'm not going to make it look horrible it needs to be nice and tidy get a little safety pin you can sew it if you want to but it's just to show you a way of making things without actually having to sew so if you haven't got a safety pin then you could just tie it up or you could put a stitch in so there nice and neat nice and neat on the top as well oh look nice as corners whoa <laughs> so there that's my mattress already so let's make a quilt so this is going to be the inside of the quilt and then this other part of the pillowcase is going to be the cover for the quilt whoa so first of all I need to measure and I need to make sure that when I measure I've got about one and a half centimeters extra on two of the edges on this outside edge and that bottom edge as well so I've got the corner here and I'm just going to measure that let me measure and cut it out and then I can show you so you get your tape measure out but I've been measuring one and a half centimeters for lots of years so I can more or less guess what one and a half centimeters is by eye so if you see that's on there and then I've got one and a half centimeters on the outside and one and a half centimeters on the bottom now this is a bit thick for my quilt I mean look at that it's like a soldier isn't it you don't want that so I'm going to try and tear this apart <coughs> neatly and just get part of it I'll try and do it evenly because if I get the thin bit of it and hopefully that will naturally fold over the edges which is what I what I want and then from the rest of it I could make some pillows couldn't I make some pillows today as well so <coughs> yeah let's pull that apart Ta -da! so we have this little bit oh that's better isn't it look see and then we can fold that neatly over nice and neater isn't it it's a lot better we can make that over time that will be nice and neat on our bed <laughs> great so we put this <clears throat> we're going to put it inside our pillowcase but we need to turn the pillowcase inside out so we've got the corner And then we're going to pop this inside. I need to put that down to pop it inside. Whoa, look at that. Oh, oh. So now we're going to sew up this outside from the bottom to the top. And, and then we'll sew up the top bit. And then we'll do some tacking stitches to just so that it looks nice and also so that it keeps it in place and stops it moving about so now that we know this fits we can take it out and put a weight on it because it will blow away so i'm just getting my pillowcase nice and straight there we go that's a nice straight edge there so then we need to get our needles so let's get some thread so with my needle I'm just going to pop it into my dress just keeps it safe <laughs> and then I get my thread a nice long piece of thread like that put 
be tough. Wet the end, just so all the threads are nice and together. Get your needle, and with the eye of the needle, you thread it through the eye of the needle. Like that. And take it all the way down to the bottom. Oh, this is a long thread. <laughs> I'm going to put that back in my dress. Now be careful you don't stab yourself or stab yourself in the eye with that. So at the bottom, now my grandma, she used to be able to twiddle the end and it would make a knot. But it doesn't do that for me. So I've worked out another way. So I fold it in half, fold the end in half by about that much. Twiddle it together. And then using my thumb, I can do this to show you, turn it around the top of my thumb. Yeah, like that. And then I tuck the end in. And then when I pull it together, I've got this. And then that's my knot. And then I can cut off the extra bits. I'll do that again. Let me cut that off and show you again. <coughs> Fold it in half. Put it around my finger. Like that. Let me go like that. Is that easier? And then with the end, pass that through the loop and then just pull it together and you get a knot. Okay? And then take off the extra bits. So let's do some. Hello, honey. It's my little chicken there. You probably can't see her. She's just come to say hello. <laughs> so then. We'll just do a running stitch. So we put the needle in at the bottom about one centimeter and then just put that in a couple of times, just go around just to just secure it. If your thread gets knotted like this, just get your needle and just pull it and then that should help to loosen it out there we go there we go right so running stitch tiny 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 so we go in and then we just come back out tiny little stitch we're going in a straight line so if you want you can draw a straight line in pencil on here and then follow that line have I got a pencil here yes I have have I got a ruler no but I can use <coughs> my lid a lid of my box so I'm just going to put this in my dress <laughs> get my lid and then draw a pencil line show you what I mean so you see now pencil line to follow makes it a bit easier so that will make it easier for you let me draw one across the top as well whoops stay still a bit difficult in the wind there we go make it darker so you can see it there and I've got my pencil lines so that's what I'm going to follow I'm 
And so the two pieces of fabric are together and we're going to go in and back out. Nice small stitches in and back out. Do that a couple of times. Pull the thread through, make sure it's not caught in anything. That's it. In and back out. In and back out. And then you just keep going all the way up. So let's just do that. Now I can hear maybe it's a fire engine or the police. They just stopped now. Wonder where they were going. You see the little running stitches? Remember to take it nice and slow because sometimes if you speed up you will have the thread knotting and you won't have the nice tiny neat stitches. Sometimes it can go a bit wobbly. So if you just take your time, follow your line, follow your little pencil line. There we go. See, we're about halfway already. It's nice when we make things that are tiny. <laughs> they don't take very long to make. <laughs> so, oops, came out. So, just in and out, in and out. And make sure that you stretch it out so we're not getting any bunching up of the fabric. Nice small stitches in and out two or three times. Pull the thread through. There we go. And make sure you pull it out so it's not bunching up. That's it, nice small stitches. It's lovely to be outside today. You can hear all the birds. Honey, my chicken, she only really makes a noise in the morning. She, it's as if she's saying, come on, wake up, get up, let me out. <laughs> so there, we've come to the end. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do a few stitches over together. And then this one, this last stitch, I'm going to get my finger, put my finger through because I need to fasten it off and then I'll put my thread through there a couple of times, let my finger go and gently pull it together and then that will give you a knot on the end. There we go, nice neat knot. So we have that. <clears throat> so this is inside out at the moment. So we've sewn it on the um, inside and now we're going to turn it back to the right side so that our stitches are hidden and it will look nice and neat. Oh, that looks very neat. I think we did good today. Look at that. Look at that stitching. Oh, see, and the reason that we use the corner of the pillar case is so that we only have one seam there to stitch. And we're going to stitch the top. So to stitch the top, <coughs> if we put pencil mark, I can see my pencil mark. I'm going to put my pencil mark on the outside just so that we can see it a bit easier. Oops. There we go. And I need to make sure that I put my quilt, whatever you're using for your quilt, pop that inside now. 
and then it'll be nice and soft nice soft quilt so let's get that in make sure it's nice and flat when you actually put that in there mine's a bit wobbly at the minute so we'll just make it nice and flat there we go so it's nice and flat this edge is a bit there we go that's better <clears throat> feels like a proper quilt oh this is good so I've got my mark here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the edges in because I want it to be nice and neat so I turn the edges in on that pencil mark that's it take your time to do this because we want it to be nice and neat if you want you can use pins just to hold it in place and make it a bit easier <clears throat> I've only got safety pins here so I'm going to put a few safety pins in to hold it down whilst I sew it I've got these tiny little safety pins, they look cute. You can take them out afterwards. So that's my edge that I'm going to sew. <coughs> Where's my thread? So again, make sure your thread is long enough. I'm going to remember tie a knot at the end, so I'll fold it in half around my finger rabbit ear through the hole. There we go. So this time we're going to go over and over and over and over and over like that instead of going up and down, up and down. So get your thread into the corner a couple of stitches to begin with make sure the knot is inside it's not going to poke out and we want this to look lovely even though it's only our quilt <laughs> we want it to be nice so we're going to go in one side and out the other so it goes over that's it keep it nice and neat and small over. That's it. In one side out the other, over the top. So you can hold them together with your thumb, your forefinger, your first finger. My glass is getting darker, it's a bit difficult to see. <laughs> There we go. So take your time. Keep it nice and neat. Make sure you don't stab your finger. It's quite easy to either stab your nail or stab your finger when you're doing this. So take your time and just be careful. So this is nice, isn't it? Sitting in the garden, listening to birds. Doing a bit of sewing. It's very calming, this sewing. So I learned to sew when I was about four years old, quite a time ago. <laughs> I went on holiday to see my grandmother in Dublin. And, um, and I stayed for, for the whole of the summer time. And so we used to do lots of lots of sewing. So we'd go to the market, get some material, come back and she would whiz it up and make me a lovely dress. She was very good, very good at sewing. So you see that's what we're doing. That looks nice and neat doesn't it? So go all the way along. So it was really exciting going to the market to look for the material and she taught me all about different types of material so this 
my pillowcase is cotton and cotton is a natural growing material and so if you've got any allergies um, and sometimes it's nice for you to have natural bedding so maybe cotton silk bamboo is um, starting to be really popular for bedding I haven't tried any it's supposed to be good if you get really hot it's bamboo bedding because it lets the moisture go from your body so I might get some bamboo bedding for the summertime actually I think that would be lovely mm -hmm. so this takes a bit longer than the last type of stitching that we did but just take your time and then you can do this so we're doing a bit of sewing today and don't worry if you get it wrong if it get messes up because you can just unpick it so you just cut out the bits that are wrong make sure you don't cut the fabric just cut the thread and then just start again no one's actually going to see this part because this is the quilt that goes inside the duvet cover so it's up to you how neat you want it to be but you know I like it to be neat nice and neat we've got lots of time I'm going to take these pins out now And take one out just coming up to the other one <laughs> so you see we're just going along okay just up one side in other side out over the top one side in other side out try and keep it as close to the top as you can like stabbing yourself in the fingernails somebody's doing some gardening Sounds like they're chopping away, maybe chopping a tree down by the sounds of it. So if you haven't got a garden, doesn't matter, you can share my garden today. Do you like my garden? Oh, the barbecue's out, the nice trees are starting to blossom, honey's here but you can't see her. She thinks she's going to get fed, that's why she's hovering. And she thinks she's going to get some special food. So Honey, my chicken, she's brown, she's nice and fluffy. And she likes to eat um, special chicken food, which is a bit like porridge mush. Uh, but her favourite is blueberries, you know, the nice little round blueberries she loves blueberries I think they're easy for her to pick up and eat but she's not too keen on strawberries she doesn't like strawberries she usually leaves them what else does she like oh I tried her with some cheese the other day she really liked the cheese never tried her with cheese before but yeah she really really did like the cheese to take out this pin now getting near the edge Oops. make sure you fasten any pins and then when you go to pick them up you're not stabbing yourself see it's coming along oh look at that just got this last little bit to do again take your time nice and patient there we go as we come towards the end it gets a bit thicker so sometimes just be aware of that it may get a bit harder to push the needle through uh, not in here sometimes you can get a thimble this be my other sewing box you get a thimble and then that can go on the end and then you can use the thimble to push it through otherwise just get the end of the um, bobbin cotton reel and just use that to push it through just saves your fingers there we're coming to the end 
So we're going to do our knot. Do you remember how to do our knot? So we make a loop. So we put the, the needle in, use our forefinger to create like a little hole. And then we're going to go through the hole twice, two or three times. And then we take our finger out and gently pull it together. And then I just do a couple of little, little normal stitches on top of it. And then carefully cut that off. There, look. <gasps> Very noisy. <clears throat> so that is our quilt. Whoa, look at our quilt. Yay. And we're going to make a headboard as well. Another week we're going to make a headboard. But that so far is our quilt. Now to stop it moving inside, the quilt bit moving inside, I'm going to put some little stitches on here. So you could do your little running stitch all the way along, like we did earlier. Um, I'm just going to do maybe six little points. So the way to do that is you don't need to do a knot. See, look how windy it is. <laughs> so maybe mark on with your pencil where you want them to be. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to, where there's a dot, just take my needle through and then all the way back. to hold on to the end of the thread like that with my finger so that it doesn't disappear back again down the hole <laughs> just do a couple more all the way through all the way back see all the way through there and then I'm coming all the way back here and then I'm just going to if I do it like this, tie these ends together. Cut it off. And there. See, I've got that little stitch on either side. So we'll do that a few more times. So you're going to hold on to the end. So that's not going to disappear down the hole. <laughs> Remember we go all the way through to the back. Yeah. And then to the front. Oh, wait a minute. I want to get my... I'm making sure that my fabric is nice and straight. So to the back, to the front. Holding on to the end. To the back, to the front. Do that two or three times. And then at the end, we actually, oops, fasten them together. And then cut it off. <clears throat> Oh, that looks like a proper little quilt, doesn't it? Oh, very nice. So let's do some more. Oh, looks like a proper quilt. I'm so excited. I've just got two more to do. So I've done four. There we go. Two more to do. my needle out, tie it together. There we go. There we go. Look at my quilt. <clears throat> so that's going to look lovely when we have a quilt cover on it. So 
make your quilts and then use the same method for making some a couple of pillows you could use you know just put this all together make it a bit thicker a bit of fabric make that a bit thicker but I've already got this so I'm going to use this as my pillow so I'm just going to measure the width of my pillow and I'll have two of those so they're the same <coughs> and I'm going to fold it in half oh look at that is that a bit chunky a bit chunky for a pillow hmm possibly I think I need to make it a bit thinner So they're both the same size. Oh, that's better for a pair of pillows, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, that's going to be nice. So take one of them <coughs> and um, this time I'm going to use this piece of fabric which has already got the two ends in it. So what I'm trying to do is save myself a bit of sewing. <laughs> because although I like sewing, we want to do this a bit quick so that we can, we can play with it, can't we? Okay, so remember, centimeter, centimeter and a half all the way around. So cut that out. spider on me is that lucky I think it is I hope it is <laughs> whoa my other one's falling away flying away I'm going to mark on turn it inside out <clears throat> whoa it's blowing away I'm just going to mark on with my pencil where I want the line to be So I've got my pillow and then I've just marked on the line there. Can you see in the pencil? So that's going to be the edge that I'm going to sew. So we need, oh, it's blown away. <laughs> Put something on top of it and stop it blowing away. Good idea. Okay, so this is inside out, like we did before. So we're just going to do one of the edges. I get my cotton. And then thread the needle. It's too windy. a knot in the end remember fold it in half make a little rabbit ho rabbit hole make a little rabbit hole with your finger and then the rabbit's ears go through the rabbit hole there we go Whoa. start remember this is a running stitch just going a few times at the, the top remember what we did and then we just go all the way through and all the way back out again nice little stitches remember follow your line all the way through all the way out do that a couple of times pull it through and make sure that's nice and straight all the way through all the way back that's it 
it's nice and straight. There we go. Sounds like they finished their gardening. Honey's still here. Hey, honey. <laughs> she definitely wants something to eat. She's got loads of food. When I'm in the garden, I just let her out and she can have a little run around. She likes that. So we're just going to do this. I'm at the end. You see all my little running stitches? Fasten off the end, do a little knot. Put your finger in, round a couple of times. There we go. If you have the type of material that frays quite a bit, I mean this is cotton, this is quite good, then you could use your, this is called pinking shears, <laughs> your zigzag scissors, and on the edge, do your zigzag, like that. Oh, it's quite nice for a pattern, isn't it? And that just stops it from fraying quite so much. So we turn it the right way around, more difficult with something that gets a bit smaller. So make sure that we have a nice corner on it. So what I do is the end of the scissors fasten together, just push that in and then you'll get a nice neat corner. I need to take some fabric off here because this is where it was attached to the other bit. Take it really carefully so I'm not going to make a hole. That's better. Okay, that's going to be my little pillow. And then, where's it gone? Uh, here. <clears throat> and pop that inside. Make sure it's nice and straight. Remember what we did next after this for the quilt because we're using the same method. Make sure it's nice and straight, don't we? First of all, get it into the corners. You might need to get your finger in there and wiggle it about a bit. And that's it. And there we go. Make sure it's nice and straight. You don't want a lumpy pillow. That's not a good look, is it? <laughs> so wiggle it about a little. top we fold it over just need to take those frayed edges off <clears throat> fold it over nice and straight I'm going to put a little safety pin in there to hold it whilst I sew it you could use a pin something to hold it together whilst we're sewing. That's it. <coughs> you can get your thread. Make a knot in the end. Cut off the excess. Start and try and get the knot inside. So we're not going to see it. Use your needle to push it down inside, and then we're going to go from one side, right, the other side, over the top. In one side, and just put my knot inside. In one side. Right, the other side, right over the top. In one side, right one side, over the top. Oops, mind you, don't get your fingers caught up. 
I'll make sure this is coming over the top. How's it? One side, on one side, over the top. In one side, out one side, over the top. In one side, out one side, over the top. <coughs> side, out one side, over the top. In one side, out one side, over the top. In one side, out one side, over the top. Nice and neat. You're doing it nice and neatly? Good. Just take your time. Just nice spending time here in the garden, isn't it? There we go. So we come to the end. What do we do at the end? Tie a knot. So with our thread, we make a loop. Use one of your fingers. Just double it around. Let your finger out and carefully pull it out. There we go. Take off the <coughs> safety pin. Here's my little pillow. Ooh. Got my bed. Look at that. I've got a mattress, pillow, quilt. Oh, I think I'll do that lengthways. My little quilt. Look at that. Whoa. So I'm going to do another pillow. You can do another pillow as well. Um, so that's your little job for today is to make yourself a quilt make yourself two pillows and if you want to make a little mattress remember you don't need to sew that but I'll do a little um, stitch on there as well just so that it it goes flat remember to do it the size of your bed two pillows or you can do four pillows if you want that would be nice I might do four pillows really luxurious and then your little quilt so give that a go and I will see you next time on my interior design kids club.